Okay. Okay. Take, take. So, um, how did you see your father when you were a child? Did you follow him at work? And from when did you start doing this? Well, as a child, you know, I could certainly see that he was, he was no ordinary person. I could feel that he was no ordinary person and, uh, shall we say, special. Because, you know, there were always, uh, well, in the newspapers, there were photographs of him. And there were these statuettes of the Golden Lion and, uh, and uh, a whole lot of other prizes. And uh, there were people constantly coming people from all spheres of life and uh, especially delegates, you know, foreign delegates. So, so, and uh, he was getting all the attention. So I could see that he was, he was, a, he was not a, not an ordinary man. But, you know, uh, when he was shooting Pothar Panchali, I was very young. I was about, I think about a year, two years old. And, uh, I faintly remember going to Boral, that house, that hut, and there were people, about 30, 40 people, and it was more like a picnic. And you know, everybody, uh, I thought they were having great fun, but they were having difficulties. But I thought they were having great fun eating together, and uh, you know, it was like a picnic. and. Uh, and there was this door, the doorway, from there you could uh, see the paddy fields and the train, the steam train. I faintly remember that, but that's, unfortunately, that's all I remember of, of, of the shooting part of Pothil Panchali. And uh, when the film was released, you know, I was there. My mother took me and I was in her lap, you know, cuddled and, uh, and after the interval, she felt that I was tired and she came back home with me. And I was very disappointed. I, I was constantly telling her, I want to see Oku again, I want to see Oku again. That's, 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 that's what she tells me. I don't remember that part, but that's what she tells me. And later, when, you know, I, I watched a lot of shooting and uh, I was absolutely dumbstruck, dumbstruck uh, when I saw the crane in, in the shooting, of, during the shooting of Borosh Pathor, when the party scene was being filled. And there was this huge thing going up, coming down. And from that point onwards, I was, I became very interested in the technicalities of filmmaking, the technical part of it. Because I was there, whenever I got the free time, whenever I was, uh, well, uh, during the weekend when I had no school, when there was no school. I, I, I just accompanied my father to the editing room. And there I was, you know, I was absolutely uh, the moviola, the gate, the film running. And it was, it was, uh, well, I was, I was very, very, uh, it was, it was like a dream. And uh, later when I, when I, and later, you know, what my father did was, uh, this was extraordinary. I don't know how, how he managed to do that. But whenever I had my holidays, and he planned his schedule accordingly, whenever he had an outdoor shoot, he planned it during our holidays, so I could go. And uh, so it was like that, you see. Well, no, it was not conscious. I was getting interested. It was not conscious, but I, I uh, still, uh, have you chosen my line and and my father never told me that uh, you have to be a film director I mean he, he gave me total freedom to, to choose my own own uh, career and uh, so uh, but unconsciously this thing was this entire thing was the entire process of filmmaking was creeping in uh, maybe unconsciously and uh, Oh, that came, that part came much later when I decided to be a that that you have a question there. Now it was it was uh, I liked it, I liked the entire process, and I and I wanted to be with my father as much as possible, but couldn't because due to my schooling and uh, so so I had my studies to do. 
Yeah. I don't remember the early part, but later when he uh, when he made uh, you know a lot of films, later films, Piku, in fact, Shona Dilla, and um, at least some films with where uh, you have children, he treated them as adults. That's what he did. That was his secret, you know. He, he never treated them as children. He never gave them, you know, toffees or sweets or anything. He, he just uh, gave them whatever he was, uh, he was having at that time, maybe a sandwich or not sweets, not chocolates, not pampering, you know, uh, mm -hmm. not, not the usual baby talk, which uh, he didn't do that. He, he treated them equal, as equal, as, as an adult. So that worked. That worked. I know this. Uh, this is uh, maybe he, he, and you know the children. They don't like being being pampered to, you know, just you know, just, uh, you just mollycoddle them, and you know, it, they don't like that. I mean, uh, so it worked. It worked amazingly. I mean, uh, and you have uh, you have performances too. When you see the performances, you know that they, they, that they were pretty well. When, when did you first seriously consider filmmaking as a possible profession for yourself? Well, much later, much, much later, because uh, the first uh, assignment which I, which I, uh, I literally uh, took it over from him was uh, a domestic trailer for Shatranj Kahilari, the chess players. The producer, the, the producer wanted a trailer, and my father didn't believe in tra trailers. He never made a trailer in his life. So, the, but the producer wanted it, and uh, he said, "What the hell do I do? I, I don't make trailers, and I hate doing trailers." So I said, "That uh, can you give me a chance? I mean, can you just uh, I, I want to do it because it." Uh, it'll be a different kind of a trailer, with interview-based trailer. So um, he gave it to me, and I made the trailer, and he was quite satisfied with it. And uh, that was my first uh, experience with film. And uh, when he was shooting uh, the chess players, when he was shooting the last army march, you know, he had three cameras. And one was being operated by him, the other was being operated by Shomil Durai. And uh, the third one, he gave it to me. He said, you, that was way back in 75, 76. And he said that you, you operate the camera. I said that I've never operated a 35 camera. I've operated an 8 millimeter uh, or um, 16 maybe, but, but not 35. He said, you do it. You Just see. But you don't have to operate, you just switch on and look through the thing. You don't have to operate it. So I did. <coughs> and I was absolutely, you know, shattered because when I switched on the camera, the, the, the shutter, and I was very disturbed by the image. I said, what the hell am I doing? I mean, is it coming out all right? But it came out all right. And uh, I generally, I, I, I got used to this sh shutter, you know, the flickering of, of, of the But then later on, you know, when I was um, confident enough, that was early 80s, 80, 81. So, so when I got the confidence, I started my own film. And how did you learn from that experience? Uh, which were the other uh, ways of learning? Oh, I learned a lot because whatever I have learned, I've learned from him and uh, from seeing and uh, uh, so, uh, but you see, the main problem is that you, well, you have learned quite a lot, but it's not the same as making a film, you know. Yeah. Whenever you make a film, you are the captain of the ship. You have to answer all the questions. And uh, that was tough. That was tough. And uh, you see, learning the grammar of, of filmmaking, that's even tough. You. You see a man working, but you, when you work yourself, it's different. Always different. Um, 
and what I did was I didn't have the confidence to operate the camera. So I gave it to Shomim Dura. I said, you do it. Uh, and he did it the first two or three days. But when I saw the rushes, I was not very satisfied because I wanted, you know, the tracking to be a little earlier, the zooming, the, the, the timing of the zooming was not, not exactly, you know, what I had in mind. So I said that, please, can I, can I operate my own camera? He said, go ahead. Because uh, he said that I'm used to uh, being only a lighting camera because I've been working with your father since you know, since '61. So, so I I don't like operating the camera on your unit, on our unit. So let's let's you you take over the job. So from I think from the fourth or fifth day onwards, I took over, took over. And remember, we had no fluid heads, nothing. And now operating is much easier. But then I had to, you know, literally clench with clenched teeth. I had to operate it because, uh, you know, uh, it can be a lot of jerks here and there. But I somehow managed. 